The combination of sensor size, mount diameter and flange distance is why a Micro Four Thirds camera is almost universally compatible with practically any lens ever made. From telecompressors to adjusting the IBIS for different focus distances, this expert guide will cover all technical and practical considerations to get outstanding results with adapted lenses under all circumstances. My name is Thomas Eisel, I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. There are many concerns when it comes to utilizing non-native lenses, meaning any lens other than a four-thirds or micro four-thirds lens. Crop factor, image quality and the hassle of manually focusing are the most commonly named. So let me address those before we get started. Sit back and take a look. From a strictly technical perspective, a Micro Four Thirds camera is perfect for adapting lenses. The reason is to be found in the interplay between sensor design and crop factor. Before we examine that in detail, one important statement up front. Adapting a lens to a Micro Four Thirds camera does not change its f number or focal length. So a 50mm f1.4 will still be a 50mm 1.4, at least with a regular adapter. More on that later. When a lens made for larger formats is adapted to a Micro Four Thirds camera, only the center portion of the image circle is utilized. Light rays in this center area are predominantly perpendicular as the micro lens arrangement of a micro four thirds sensor is designed with telecentric lenses in mind, the resulting match is perfect. Additionally, lens vignetting is largely cropped and therefore drastically reduced. To conclude, usually adapting does not introduce any additional vignetting and existing peripheral darkening is cropped out. Edge-to-edge -edge sharpness and contrast are maintained very well. Unfortunately, the crop factor yields two disadvantages, which sound drastic but are mostly negligible in practice. First, the lens has to meet higher requirements concerning resolving power as a smaller portion of the projected image is enlarged more than originally intended by the lens designer. Second, assuming same sized prints, lens defects are enlarged more and therefore carry more weight than originally envisioned by the lens designer. There are two possible approaches to mitigate these issues. Either only adapt high quality lenses to get high quality results or embrace the lower fidelity as part of the aesthetic of the adapted lens. At its most basic, an adapter provides a connection between the lens and the camera some adapters include optics to act as telecompressors and others even transmit limited information to the camera body. Regardless of adapter type, smallest manufacturing tolerances are key to ensure parallelism and infinity focus. Therefore, only adapters of the highest quality should be utilized. You get what you pay for. A telecompressor or focal length reducer utilizes an optical system to compress the diameter of the image circle. The effective focal length is decreased and more light is concentrated on the sensor, reducing the effective F number. This has several benefits in terms of image quality. Due to the compression, 
optical defects are compressed as well and therefore less pronounced. The resulting image will also appear sharper. However, the vignetting will no longer be cropped as effectively. Unfortunately, there is no gain without pain and telecompressors bring a few disadvantages as well. The optical system of the telecompressor might not concentrate the light perpendicularly to the sensor plane, leading to a reduction of sharpness, contrast and resolving power in the periphery of the frame. A telecompressor also introduces additional optical elements which can affect the rendering, especially if cheap adapters with low quality optics are used. Some adapters allow for autofocus operation of the mounted lens. The performance can vary drastically depending on the camera, lens and adapter used. The safe bet is to always manually focus adapted lenses. For regular adapters, I highly recommend Novoflex, German precision engineering at the highest level. For telecompressors and autofocus adapters, I would recommend Metabones. Most adapters do not transmit aperture information or any other data to the camera. This has three major consequences in practice. First, lenses can only be used at the working aperture. On the plus side, focus shift is of no concern and depth of field is always previewed accurately. However, the plane of critical focus is harder to discern at smaller apertures. Also, live view frame rates can drop if too little light reaches the sensor. This happens especially in low light or when using a combination of slow shutter speeds and large F numbers. Second, the exposure metering can be impaired. Depending on the camera model, using center weighted averaging or spot metering can mitigate the issue. Third, as there is no native 4 thirds standard lens data, the camera cannot perform automatic corrections at the raw processing stage. In order to get the same image quality as with native lenses, manual post-processing is required. This usually encompasses removing of chromatic aberrations and sharpening. If no focal length information is transmitted to the camera, the in-body image stabilization system has to be manually calibrated. Micro Four Thirds cameras provide an interface to enter the focal length of the mounted lens in millimeter. However, the focal length values provided by manufacturers are almost always rounded and even if they would be exact, they are only applicable when the lens is focused at infinity. A native Micro Four Thirds lens mitigates any issues as it can relay precise information about the focusing distance and focal length to the camera body to adjust the IBIS accordingly. So theoretically, in order to ensure best IBIS performance with an adapted lens, the real focal length of the lens at the given focus distance should be set. If the set focal length is too short, the IBIS will undercompensate and deliver less stabilization. If the set focal length is too long, the IBIS will overcompensate and the resulting sensor movement will blur the photograph. In practice, entering the standard focal length usually leads to acceptable results as the manufacturers have incorporated certain tolerances. The following three recommendations, however, ensure peak performance and satisfying results every time. Number one, test the IBIS calibration with the adapted lens at the desired shooting distance. Fine tune for best results. 
At closer focus distances, focus breathing usually allows for longer focal lengths to be set. This will in turn increase IBIS effectiveness. Number two, when you are adapting a zoom lens, either set the correct focal length the lens is used at or set the shortest focal length of the lens, accepting compromised IBIS performance. Number three, deactivate IBIS when in doubt and utilize a tripod. No IBIS system in the world beats a good old fashioned tripod. Note that some cameras, like the OM system OM1, allow the photographer to enter lens information, including a custom lens name and the focal length. When one of the registered lenses is selected, the focal length setting is automatically transferred to the IBIS system. Additionally, the lens designation is stored in the EXIF data. From a technical standpoint, the Micro Four Thirds sensor format is very well suited for adapting both modern and vintage lenses, even if they were initially designed for other formats and recording media. From an aesthetic standpoint, an adapted lens can provide a unique look both for photography and videography. Give it a try, it is well worth it and a lot of fun. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.